this on the whole time? Well, I must have looked like an idiot up here. I'm sorry, I've degraded myself. And I will never ever wear something like this again. Sorry, I just lost my mind just for a But that's okay for me. <laughs> I still remember that skit from Steve Martin. Uh, it, it was during the time when I think I was a junior or senior, 11th or 12th grade in high school, and we would actually greet each other in high school. Hey, you, you wild and crazy guy. Well, in our gospel lesson today, we meet another wild and crazy guy. At least that's what the Bible says. Uh, let's look at the words from the Gospel of St. Mark, the third chapter. Then Jesus went home, and the crowd came together again so that they could not even eat. When his family heard it, they went out to restrain him, for people were saying, He has gone out of his mind. The King James Version puts it this way, Jesus is beside himself. And that's pretty close to the Greek, which reads something like, Atu exelathon, standing beside oneself, which meant you were out of your mind. J.B. Phillips' translation says, people were saying he must be mad. But the one I like the most is from the 1995 CEV version, which says, when Jesus' family heard what he was doing, they thought he was crazy and went out to get him under control. So forgive me for saying it this way, but Jesus was and is a wild and crazy guy. And those who would be his disciples and those who would be his followers today are called and challenged to be just as crazy as he was. So I want to say to you today what this church needs, what this world needs, are some more crazy Christians. Now, in saying this, I don't want to be too quick to judge Jesus' mother and his family at the time. They had good reason to be concerned about Jesus. They had heard his teaching, like the Sermon on the Mount, where he said, Do not repay evil for evil or abuse for abuse, but on the contrary, repay it with a blessing. That's crazy. He said, The greatest among you will be your servant. That's crazy. What the world calls wretched, Jesus calls blessed. Blessed are the poor and the poor in spirit. Blessed are the merciful, the compassionate. Blessed are those who hunger and thirst that God's righteous justice might prevail. Blessed are those who work for peace. Blessed are you when you are persecuted just for trying to love and do what is good in the eyes of God. Jesus was crazy. He said, love your enemies. Bless those who curse you. Pray for those who despitefully use you. Crazy. He prayed while they were killing him, Father, forgive them, for they know not what they do. Now that's crazy. But what we need in today's world, I think, are some Christians who are as crazy as the Lord, crazy enough to love like Jesus, to give like Jesus, to forgive like Jesus, to do justice, love mercy, and walk humbly with God like Jesus. Crazy enough to dare to change the world from the nightmare that it often is to something close to the dream that God dreams for it. 
And for those who would follow him, those who would be his disciples, well, it might come as a shock, but they are called to craziness. Here's, here's one example of such a call from the New Testament. It's the call of Mary Magdalene, Mary Magdalene. For whatever reason, Mary sometimes gets a bum rap. But think back to the crucifixion of Jesus. Now, crucifixion was execution by the empire for crimes against the state. It was public torture. It was an intentionally brutal means of capital punishment designed to send a message that revolution and revolutionaries would not be tolerated in the Roman Empire. And if you were a supporter or follower of the person being crucified, it was dangerous to stand too close during the execution. You would be labeled a revolutionary. So the rational and sensible thing to do was to go into exile or hiding. Now, having said that, let's call the role of those Jesus called to follow him. Let's take the attendance of the apostles at the crucifixion of their Lord. Simon Peter, absent. James, absent. Andrew, absent. Bartholomew, absent. Thomas, absent. Judas, most definitely absent. Mary Magdalene, present and accounted for. Now that's a disciple. And so when we sing that old hymn, were you there when they crucified my Lord? There was a woman named Mary Magdalene who could answer, I was there. Now that's crazy. Some of you may remember that I'm kind of an amateur history buff. I love to read history. And recently I've been reading more about uh, the United States Civil War. And I was reading a story about the author Harriet Beecher Stowe. She was born in 1811 to a very uh, devout Christian family. And she's best known for her work, Uncle Tom's Cabin. And that was required reading for, for all of us uh, in uh, seventh or eighth grade in the United States. In this fiction, she tells the truth. She, she tells the truth about the brutality and the injustice and the humanity of slavery. Her book did what YouTube videos of injustices and brutalities do today, it went 19th century viral. The influence of that book was so powerful that Abraham Lincoln is reputed to have said upon meeting her for the first time, so this is the little lady who started this great war. You see, a woman of her error was supposed to write nice stories, not stories that would disturb the conscience of the nation. She was expected to marry well and raise children and participate perhaps in a few charitable causes and be fondly remembered. But she was raised in a family that believed that following Jesus means changing the world from the nightmare it often is into the dream that God intends. And sometimes that means marching to the beat of a different drummer. Sometimes that means caring when it's tempting to care less, or standing up when others sit down. Sometimes it means speaking up when others shut up. Sometimes it means being different, maybe even a little crazy. Apple had a commercial that originally aired in 1997, uh, but after Steve Jobs' death, it was posted on YouTube and it, again was watched by hundreds of thousands. And the commercial attempted to rebrand Apple products with the tagline, think different. A phrase that is grammatically incorrect, which is part of the point, think different. In the commercial, they showed a collage of photographs and film footage of people who have 
invented and inspired, created and, and sacrificed to improve the world and to make a difference. They showed Bob Dylan, Amelia Earhart, Frank Lloyd Wright, Maria Callas, Martin Luther King Jr., Jim Henson, Albert Einstein, Pablo Picasso, Mahatma Gandhi, and on and on. And as the images rolled by, a voice read this poem. Here's to the crazy ones, the misfits, the rebels, the troublemakers, the round pegs in the square holes, the ones who see things differently. They're not fond of rules, and they have no respect for the status quo. You can quote them, disagree with them, glorify or vilify them. About the only thing you can't do is ignore them. Because they change things, they push the human race forward. While some may see them as crazy ones, we see genius. Because the people who are crazy enough to think that they can change the world are the ones who do. We need some crazy Christians. Sane, sanitized North American Christianity is killing us. That may have worked once upon a time, but it won't carry the gospel anymore. We need to imitate the example of some earlier followers of Jesus, like the disciples, like Mary Magdalene, like Harriet Beecher Stowe, like Martin Luther, that crazy German monk who was nuts enough to challenge the Pope in Rome and the church for having turned the gospel into a money-making machine selling indulgences and licenses to sin. We need some crazy Christians, crazy enough to believe that God is real and that Jesus lives, crazy enough to follow the radical way of the gospel, crazy enough to believe that the love of God is greater than all the powers of evil and death. We need some Christians crazy enough to believe that children don't have to go to bed hungry, that the world doesn't have to be the way it often seems to be because every human being has been created in the image of God and we are all equally children of God and meant to be treated as such. Are you a crazy Christian? Hmm? Are you crazy enough to believe that Jesus Christ is God in flesh? who gave his life so that you may have eternal life? That he conquered sin and the devil, that you can have forgiveness in his name? Are you crazy enough to believe that he gave you the power of the Holy Spirit? And are you bold and crazy enough to take those truths out into the world and transform it one person at a time? Even a small act can have huge repercussions. As I was thinking about this, I was thinking that maybe, you know how um, some, some societies have secret handshakes and things. Well, you know, we don't have that in church, God forbid. Um, but we do some things that if you're not Christian, you might not know how to respond. And one of those would be the Easter greeting that we give each other. The traditional greeting is one person says he is risen and the other person says he is risen indeed. And you can always tell if a church, if it's a church goer or not, because you might say he is risen and maybe their response would be, yes, happy Easter. Wrong response. <laughs> now, maybe we should have a similar sort of thing for every day Sunday worship. Maybe something like this. Hello. Have, have we met? And the other person responds, well, hi, I'm just a wild and crazy guy. Now may the peace of God, which passes all understanding, keep your hearts and minds in Jesus Christ, our Lord. Amen.